Yeah, so I guess I'll give something tactical and something more high level. Um, so the high level thing is, you know, people. Some people will say you can't just throw everything, in, th throw everything against the wall and see what sticks. Um, I, I typically will do that. And the, the key thing is to really keep an open mind, right? Because sometimes you know things that don't work in the past, you're like, oh, that didn't work for us in the past. We're never going to do it again, right? You have to keep an open mind and start doing it again. So maybe let's let's just say you know Facebook ads never worked for you in the past, right? You know Facebook just made some changes, you know, in the last few months, major changes, right? Maybe it's time to test it again, see what happens, right? So keep an open mind. Don't be like such a naysayer that like that's like, oh yeah, that's not going to work for us. We tried it, blah blah blah. It's like, dude, like things change, right? Um, that, so that's the high level part. Um, on the tactical level, I think you know. You know, one channel I, I'd say is, is heavily underutilized right now is YouTube advertising, and that's you know one thing that we've helped our clients with. Um, and in some cases, it's become it's become their number one customer acquisition channel, right? Um, so it's really you know, look into YouTube advertising. You know, if you have some budget, you know, spend some money there, and you might be able to acquire you know, you know, customers at a, in a using a very scalable channel um, at a very cost effective price. Um, and and that that all comes down to you know, be having an open mind and trying things again, right? Because you you know every marketer will look for for channels and try to saturate them right and I think YouTube is going to be the next uh, saturated channel so it's it's time to get into it right now before everyone else starts jumping into it. So the, the, you bring up a really interesting point and I mean you brought up social and I think we don't talk about social enough so let me take a moment and kind of go into it. Facebook makes a lot of changes right and a lot of that's happened recently and we have a thousand new social channels coming up you know between Snapchat and Instagram and everything else and all of these channels some allow ads some don't but there is a lot of self-promoting on those channels as well through the pages mm -hmm. so wh where do you see that I mean is Facebook's move ultimately killing I mean, from a lot of people, you're, you're hearing a lot of new articles come out about Facebook is pretty much dead to businesses unless you spend a lot of money mm -hmm. uh, on paid advertisement. And then uh, wait, what should people focus on? One channel, all channels? I mean, we've seen people do really well with one versus they're not really on others. You know, others use Twitter and, and then some others just don't use anything. So where should people's efforts be outside of the YouTube thing, which you just talked about? Yeah, so I, I think it really depends on where, what stage you're at. So if you have low resources, ideally you would only focus on a few channels. Let's say you're at the startup or the growth phase. Um, once you have more resources, I think it's it's okay to venture out and try other ones and see what sticks and what doesn't. And I hate really look at competitors too much, but this is a good case where you look at competitors and kind of spot the trends and see where they're at and what's working for them, right? Um, that always works out. And I think... Yeah, I, I think that's a good starting point, but at the end of the day, you know, it's it's a it's not the greatest answer, but it it truly really depends. So so, but would you recommend people being very good at one over others, or really spreading their resources across like four to five platforms? They can, they can never be on all of them. There's just too many. I recommend if you can be world class at one instead of being mediocre at other ones, you definitely want to be world class at one because then you stick out. Okay. And so you talked earlier about something that's important. You said jumping on something before it becomes saturated, like YouTube advertisement, holds a lot mm -hmm. of value. What can you tell us about YouTube advertisement that people can put in effect today? Yeah. Okay. The biggest thing I'll tell you the biggest thing right now is when you um, when you set a targeting group in YouTube advertising, um, you know Google by default will set the same uh, bid amount. So let's say you're bidding, you know, twenty cents, right? That means you're bidding twenty cents on you know pre-roll ads, mid-roll ads, you know, all the different ads, right? You actually have the ability to customize which format you like. So for me, you know, um, what I what I've seen is the pre-roll ads tend to do better. So I really don't care about the other ones. So I'm going to bid low on those, but I'm going to go high on the pre-roll ads, right? And if because I'm able to do that, I get a lot more impressions for the pre-roll ads, and I get a lot more conversions there because that's the you know that converts for me. It's 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 cost effective, right? The big problem right now is people don't know that. So Google's like taking their money. They're not getting the, the maximum effect out of their their uh, their YouTube advertising uh, campaigns. So are are there any to dos in terms of making sure your video is optimized to convert? Like, is there maybe like I've seen some people have the back end linking directly in the in the video. Some people have it in the description. Is there some tips you can give us as to what what people should definitely have a minimum checklist like that your video meets these standards? Yeah. So. Um, you know, the first eight seconds, they say, you know, if you don't catch your attention in the first eight seconds, they're pretty much gone, right? So have something in eight seconds. Don't put your stupid logo in the, in the first eight seconds, you know, not, not your stupid logo. You could put your logo, put your beautiful logo, you know, somewhere else in the video, maybe at the end. 
Uh, make sure you have a call to action at the end, hopefully annotate it. Uh, make sure you track the link as well. So adding like a UTM parameter to it so you can see in analytics, um, you know, what's it, what, what campaign is coming from, you know, which one's converting, things like that. Um, just makes your life easier at the end of the day. Um, and it makes you look like a superstar if you're, if you're handling like marketing for someone. So in terms of some of these videos that go extremely viral and they're extremely stupid, you know, like the, the oranges and the bananas and the, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, a lot of people say these people buy views first, they get them to trend and then they kind of ride the, the wave up from there. Is that really what's going on on the, on the back end of YouTube advertising or, or is it really a genius marketing strategy that, that's leveraging those, those platforms? I think for the most part, like the videos that you talk about, the ones that go super viral, um, those are those are those are content publishing on YouTube. It's not so much the advertising. I think if, if it was an advertising play, it'd probably be a dumb play, um, unless you have millions of dollars to spend and you're just doing it for branding purposes, um, which I think that's not the case for most people. Um, so I would say, yeah, probably you you probably want to avoid doing the <laughs> trying trying to go for the viral videos um, and trying to ride the trend because anyway, for the most part. Those are unqualified views, and you know you, you don't want to spend a lot of money on unqualified views. Um, and anyway, if you're spending, if you're trying to make a viral video, you're spending a lot of ad, ad dollars on that already, right? Um, so I, I think if you want more direct response type stuff, you probably want to go for like an explainer video that quickly explains what you guys are doing, have a call to action at the end, get them back to your website. Um, and I, I think that's the case for most people. So, so you don't. I mean, so it is all a hoax, similar to buying fake Facebook fans. When you buy fake YouTube views, or, or does that really hold value? I mean, it seems like I mean, when you see a video come up and in, within five minutes it has like half a million views, it's just bizarre, right? Like especially if it's a not known artist. But then within a few weeks after, it's got millions. Yeah. Okay. So you actually bring up a good point. There's some companies out there right now. I'm not going to name them where you can buy YouTube views, right? Those are absolutely not worth it. Those are garbage views, um, and uh, you know, for the most part, right now, this is what I see. I, I've tried these before. I've tested it. You know, times might be different today, but I definitely wouldn't spend money on it because it's just sucking away your money. You're not good. You're not really tr trying to drive anything. This is one of those. Oh, we're driving traffic up. We're doing a good job, right? No, you're not doing a good job. You're not driving revenue up. So, um, you know, I, I would stay away from it right now. But that's not to say in a few months it might be useful. Okay, so as of today, buying views is not really something that's going to trend or put you on the front page of YouTube. Probably not for the most part.